Welcome back to the Head and Heart podcast. Uh, this is the podcast where we look at footy from an emotional and a uh, mathematical standpoint. As always, I'm the heart, he's the head. Let's get into it. It's it's round nine of the NRL Rugby League. It's a big week, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. We've uh, we both both had a bit of a rough week on the bets uh, for this one, so we'll jump yeah. into accountability and then we'll talk about how we're gonna we're both gonna get back into it. Um, so for myself. I went one from six of the bets posted on the pod with a total loss of $463.50 and a similar total loss uh, overall in the spreadsheet. Uh, and how about yourself? Well, it's a bit of Groundhog Day. I've beaten you once again. Um, I've only down 50 bucks this week, but I have not got a single bet right. Um, so I think I'm due next week. Yeah, both very due. Uh, moving very, into very next due. week. Very, very due. Yeah, we'll quickly go through each game in a bit more detail just to talk through our bets and how they went. Uh, so first game was the Warriors-Titans game. Uh, the Titans won 27-24. Uh, for myself, I had the Warriors 1-12. It's a bit of a tough loss in this one. Uh, unfortunately, that one didn't get up. What did you have? Well, I had a Warriors 13+. plus. I then also had DWZN and Tamari Martin to score. And the Warriors lost. I, I did not see this one coming, did you? I mean, well, we, we did have that side bet on the Warriors-Titans line. And so my side my side of that side bet, the Titans line, got up pretty comfortably. But yeah, I wasn't uh, sort of... Was I was that. looking for a bit more value, ended up backing the Warriors 1-12, to which is annoying, uh, instead of just backing the line of the Titans. But um, but what can you do? I did. What can you do? Unfortunately, um, upsets like this happen. We said we said the Titans were building, we didn't we as well. So I didn't expect them to win this, but I thought they would win maybe the game after. But yeah, that was. I mean, they've been building. I'm su- I'm surprised it did take them this long to be honest to win a game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was coming, and yeah, probably this was the game that that it was going to come. Uh, the we'll move on to the next game: Dragons Roosters. Roosters demolished the Dragons, uh, sixty to eighteen. Yeah. For myself, I had the Roosters 1 to 12 in this one. My thinking was that the Dragons have been solid. I expected the Roosters to win, but I expected the Dragons to have a bit more of a fight than that on uh, on an Anzac Day clash, but it didn't happen like that. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, so I had uh, Lomax 10 plus points, Walker 6 plus points, which I believe he got 20 something. Um, and then also had Young and Lomax anytime try scorers with Dragons at a line of 10 and a half. So ignoring all of that, uh, I think a couple parts of that got up, but anything Dragons related did not. But uh, to be fair, though, what ended up happening was Moses Sully went off in the first minute, did he not? Yeah, I think he went off early, but I mean, yeah, yeah and then it's a bit annoying. Up, but yeah, well, what ended up happening, right, was that the Roosters just dominated that left edge because Tom, Tom Eisenhuth was their centre. Like, what else yeah. can you do about that? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a bit, bit annoying when stuff like that happens, but you got to... Take the good with the bad in that instance. Um, moving on to the next game, the Storm game. I had the Storm in a close one again. Didn't play out like that. I think it was one of those games for the Rabbitohs where it was very make or break. And, yeah, they definitely broke. They got pumped in this one. It looked like they were going to come back a little bit, and I thought my bet had a chance to be on, but then this the Storm ran away with it uh, and probably yeah deserved to win by yeah, quite a bit there. Um, yeah, funnily enough, I had the Storm to win by 30, and they did, but I also got a bit greedy and then tried to combine that with Katoa, Pappenhausen, and Hughes. Yeah, so I mean, Hughes have... didn't go over, and Katoa did not, but Pappy scored a double. What yeah. can you do? Yeah, you had the right thinking. Maybe you need to yeah. just reel in some of because no, that, was paying, that was paying $41 or something. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was almost there. Could have won. Yeah, yeah, but... um. Yeah, I guess you have the right thinking in that game. Maybe it's still the type of team that uh, are going to start putting on some big scores. Uh, the next game was the Sea Eagles versus the Eels. I never bet in this game. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, so I'm actually mad about this one. It should have been up. So I had, uh, yeah, I had mainly 13 plus Saab and Tom Travojevic at any time. So Ruben Garrick's first try, if he passed that out, which he probably should have in nine out of 10 situations, Saab goes over. But no, he draws the contact himself and just tries himself and scores. Like, I would have been so frustrated if if he didn't score in that situation. Mm. 
But like, what can you do? I guess you just have to roll with the punches, don't you? Yeah. Would you? Would there be anything like you might call that style of bet then, or uh, omenry? I guess I don't know. I was gonna. <laughs> I was leaning towards like moral victory in that one. No, uh, I've moved on from that. So <laughs> can't. Okay, okay. Like something that annoys me very much is when a certain podcast basically makes one word and repeats it over and over again. If I <laughs> if I turn the word moral victory into that, I will neck. Yeah. Okay. We've moved on. We no more no more moral victories for us. We'll find something else. For the rest of the podcast, we're only going to have real victories. We're both making a lot of profit this week. Um, I'm going to have narrow defeats instead. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, the next game is the Tigers-Broncos. Uh, the Broncos won pretty convincingly. Uh, I didn't bet on this one. I sort of spoke to that I, I thought the Broncos could be good and didn't really know exactly what the Tigers were going to put up in this one. And, yeah, the, the Broncos ended up running away with it. Uh, do you want to talk to your bet as well? Yeah, so I had Broncos 13+, plus and Arthur's any time. Um, so pay attention to where players are named in the team list. I thought he was playing on the wing, but, no, he was, he was playing in the centre, so it just had no chance. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. I, we also had Reese Walsh over under 70 as one of yeah. our side bets, and he just got over. So... For myself, two and zero lead in this round of side bets, uh, but we'll maybe cook some up this this round as well. Uh, to as see if he didn't cramp up five minutes earlier, so my bet could get up. Yeah, true, true. Uh, but yeah, no, we'll we'll cook up some more and keep the keep the run going for the next couple of rounds. Um, to see when it's up winning. Uh, but yeah, so you just missed on that one. The next game was the Panthers Cowboys. Hey, the Panthers line minus seven and a half. That was looking very comfortable for a lot of the game. And then the Cowboys had a late little comeback, ended up winning by six. So pretty heartbreaking loss in this game. Yeah. Uh, but what about yourself? Well, I thought the Cowboys wouldn't put up as much of the fight as they did. I'm I'm honestly surprised they did. I had Panthers at a line of negative 19 and a half. Um, and then also Taruva and Tungo anytime try scorers. Uh, sorry, Truva anytime try score with Truva and Tungo to combine for three tries at 1075. Yeah. Uh, Truva ended up getting cut very early on. Um, so my bet was actually voided this one, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. It was Alan Motti and, and Alan Motti scored anyway. So uh, if you weren't yeah, Alan Motti, it wouldn't have been true a bad bet either way. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, the, you win something new, son. Yeah, the next game was the. A big result for us. Uh, the Knights beat the oh, Dolphins 18-14. Um, I thought I was going to, because I took the Dolphins minus five and a half, I thought I was going to be punished in that it would end up being like the Dolphins end in a really, in a really tight one and then both the Knights lose coward. and the bet loses. But luckily at least the Knights won. <laughs> Absolutely um, coward. Yeah, yeah. What about, what did you have in this one? Yeah, so I honestly thought we'd lose. So I had Bostock, Fuller, and Armstrong anytime try scorers. Uh, so I told you, we've got a lot of debutants scoring, and Armstrong went over for the first try of the game. Yeah. And then other than that, uh, Bostock and Fuller did not go anywhere near the try line. Even though Fuller scored like 90-something super coach points, which is insane for a fullback to do that without any real attacking, without any real try scoring stats. Yeah, he had like three line breaks or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was in everything. So both the fullbacks looked really good in this game. Both good. Yeah, very sexy fullbacks. fullbacks. I I can't wait awesome. to get them both on my team. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we'll talk to that when that game comes along. But yeah, great win for the Knights. Uh, the final game of the round, massive blowout by the Sharks, forty nil over the Raiders. This is my one win of the round. Sharks again. I had the Sharks last round, which got me up uh, right at the end, and they got the Sharks minus five and a half. Uh. And yeah, that was very comfortable. Uh, what did you have in this game? Yeah, so I thought this would be closer. I had the Sharks head to head with Mulatalo and Schiller anytime try scorers. Yeah. Mulatalo did not look like scoring that game. That's like the first game I've ever watched the Sharks play where Ronaldo, well, R5, my favorite Ronaldo, did not look like anywhere near scoring. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't in, involved as much as he has been previous weeks. But uh, Yeah, and then, of course, this is the first game ever the Raiders have been held to nil since, I think, something round something 2013. 
2013, yeah, it's like 10, I think it's round two, 2013, like 10 years, yeah. something, something Quite crazy. Quite literally, yeah, over 10 years, which is such an insane stat. Yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, that's like a 40 nil. yeah, it's a, it's a crazy scoreline, but shouldn't read too much into it uh, for the for the Raiders because obviously they haven't had a scoreline like that in the last uh, 10 years, so. Yeah, at the same time, points. though, Stick, sorry, sorry, I was going to say, at the same time, though, Sticky is saying that Raiders fans expect this for the next three months. We're, we're in a bad state. Yeah, they are definitely attacking wise a lot worse. Well, I mean, probably defensively in terms of their structures without Fogarty. But um, yeah, you got to you got to take that into account a little bit, but don't over don't overreact. Basically, um, yeah. So already mentioned that uh, two and zero on the side bets. We'll cook up some more side bets for this round. Let's talk our super coach ranks. Uh, so uh, I'm. I've fallen down uh, 8K to total of 30,544th uh, with a total score 1,109. Uh, I did have a win, a win, luckily, even though I had a pretty bad score. Uh, so, so I moved up to second in our Super Coach League. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, so I am now up to 45,231. Uh, up about 5,000 uh, with a score of 11,198 total. I am now third in this league. And I'd like to remind you, I would be in first place right now if not for the fact Caelan Ponga went down injured last week. Yeah, sounds like an yeah. excuse, mate. It is actually a very valid excuse in this circumstance. <laughs> you need to get like 50 and I would have beaten you and be top right now. You know that, right? Yeah, well... You've been kissed on the dick by God, mate. That's exactly what's happened there. I have, and this round I was as well because I, like, yeah, I didn't have a good score. I still won, and I'm. I think I'm like, I think we're both ranked pretty low in terms of total points in the league, but we're second and third in, yeah, um, um, in head to head. So we've both got some pretty lucky results, I guess. I had so a look, fun. and I'm really worried about the future because it turns out I've had the softest draw so far. I've had the least amount of points put on me in the yeah. entire league. Yeah, yeah, nice. Um, yeah, so who are you bringing in for trade this week, Matt? Yeah, let's just quickly talk about best bets firstly. Um, best bets of the week probably for myself is the Cowboys over 27.5 total points. You can find that on Neds and Ladbrokes at $1.83 at the moment. You can find it on, I think, Sportsbed and other places around $1.80. Uh, yeah, I like the Cowboys because... Uh, yeah, they, they're, they're off a few losses. If they played a few tough teams, this is the first decent fixture they've got in a while. So they'll be looking to flex their attack. And then, um, yeah, a, a lot of their super coach players will do well as well. We can talk about that when we get into that game. What about yourself? Yes. Yeah, so I am repeating my best bet of the round um, from last week. So I've got Manly 13 plus, uh, Turbo and Saab $4. Yeah, if it ain't broke. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It almost worked last week. It should have worked last week, and it will win this week. I promise you, it is my lock of the week. Put your yeah. house on it. Actually, probably don't put your house on it. My betting but my betting history is very bad. Probably don't listen to my best bet of the week, but listen to this one in particular. It's getting up. Yeah, put your house on it. Don't put your house on it. Gamble <laughs> responsibly. Yeah, gamble responsibly. Um, let's talk super coach trades for the round. Uh for myself, I'm moving currently at the moment, moving Strange to Garrick and Lane to Britain Nicara. Uh, moving off Strange this week because he does have, he's sort of maxed out in price. I was going to move off Schiller, but Schiller's not going to lose any value because he hasn't been picked. So I can just sit him there. He won't be an AE either to worry about. I'll probably move off Schiller next week. I'm looking to do uh, Armstrong and probably Dom Young next week so two trades in the center wing uh what about yourself yeah so similar situation to me i am trading savage to garrick instead i uh, keep in mind i had the three raiders cheapies being savage schiller and uh strange yep. my plan for now is to keep strange even though he may even lose points just in case he does do decent again uh probably not going to start him or play resis for a while but i'll keep him the team for now and like you said, I will move off Schiller next week as well. Um, other than that, because I got 
I somehow got lucked out of this one. Fuller looks like an absolute legend, so I'm finally trading off a Ponga to go to Fuller at fullback. Yeah, so you're gonna have a lot of money in that in that war chest to make yeah, moves. Five hundred thousand dollars sitting there as well. So my team value is still going up. I think it's valued at fourteen point five million right now. Yeah. So hopefully we can break through next week. Yeah, yeah. So some big moves in the next couple of weeks for yourself and yeah, hopefully some nice. big moves for myself as well. But let's jump into the first game of the round. Uh the Rabbitohs versus the Panthers. Uh yeah, and, and you've spoken yourself about um about J D. Do you want to quickly touch on him? Yeah, so he's now been sacked. Is it confirmed that he's sacked? It has been confirmed that Jason Demetrio is sacked. Yeah, right. So, um, do you know do you, what, what effect do you think that has on the Rabbitohs in this game? Well, do you think the problem is actually Jason Demetrio, or do you think maybe it's the players just refusing to listen to anyone? Like, if they're not listening to JD, why would they possibly listen to the assistant coach? If if yeah. it seriously is what they're suggesting, i.e. the players think they're better than the club, I don't think a new coach is going to do anything until those players are gone. I think it's a bit unfair to blame it on JD in that situation. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you a lot of the time, but yeah, a lot of the stories you've heard about JD coming out and uh, saying like, oh, sorry about, uh, yeah, like just about his coaching habits, I'm, I'm, I think he is probably a lot of the problem. Uh, I'd be interested to see who they get in, but this week I wouldn't be interested in playing them and probably not interested in playing the Panthers either in this game, but I'll I'll talk to that once we get into our best bets. Uh, let's talk about how it affects super coach players. The first one being Jai Gray. I see someone that you might have thought about bringing in uh, into your well, team. Well, isn't Latrell back next week? Yeah, he's back shortly. Um, yeah, I, I just don't think he... Even if this new coach thinks, hey, maybe we should play Latrell in the centres, I don't think Jai Gray has done enough to justify his position being there. I, yeah. I really don't think it's a good idea to bring him in now if you, if, if you do have him. He's been all right. Like, he, he, he's... Yeah, he's been a decent point for them. Uh, but, yeah, for mine, I'm not, not thinking about bringing him in until we get more confirmation on his role. Uh, another player that we could look at is Jacob Gagai. I think he's at 200k. <laughs> he's got one of the highest, well, that's why one of the lowest break evens this week. Would he be someone that you think about? Again, uh, player stability there. When is Alex Johnston back? Yeah. I mean, I guess that is a, that's a short term trade either way. I think for myself at this point of year, it's not the worst trade ever, but. If I'm bringing in cheapies, do they want, they need to be sort of a, an absolute slam dunk. So, like a Trey Fuller, he's got he's had two massive scores in a row. He's going to hold his position for maybe at least another couple of weeks, and then Hammer's almost definitely going to play Origin, and he's going to get 13, 16, and 19. So, if you want Trey yeah, Fuller, probably. yeah, if you have a spot at your fullback, then Trey Fuller's like a slam dunk cheapie for mine. But someone like a Jacob Gagai is definitely not. So, whereas maybe. You would have looked at it earlier in the year. I think at this point of the year, because you've already made a fair bit of money, you need to be sort of starting to chase points, which is what I'm doing with my trades. Yeah, but if you're someone who, say, had him from round one, you are absolutely cheering because he's finally making money. Yeah, like, exactly. There are so many people in that who had Jacob Gagai starting round one. They saw him get went, hell yeah, we finally have an absolute cheapy playing for a good club, only to find out he got dropped, and then the Rabbitohs do terribly as well to, to kick the shin in, to kick the, uh, the boot in. Yeah, yeah. Um, other super coach relevant players, Taylor May is still doing poorly for mine. I'm, he's a sort of player I'm just holding at the moment, not playing. I think he plays round 13, so I might hold him to round 13. There's a good chance I trade off him next week just by the stru- like because of the structure of my team and I want to get Armstrong and Dom Young next week. But yeah, like I'm just, I'm just holding for now and then hoping something starts to come good, but I definitely, if you don't have to, I wouldn't risk playing a, a Taylor May this week, even though they are playing the Bunnies. Um, yeah. Is there any I'm, certainty that Sonny Taruva plays as well? What happened last week? Was he, because he got dropped out like last minute. Not sure exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just seems like, it seems like the Panthers, Panthers' backs have kind of quietened down a little bit. So I'm not too certain it's a great idea to bring them in right now, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I could, Easily see a lot of them going big this 
pick this round, but um, yeah, th there's a lot of risk around a few of those players there. But yeah, but they'll, they'll I, I expect them to put on some points this round. So there's other players in this team that I like, and that one of them is is obviously their half Nathan Cleary. Uh, yeah. Is he someone that you thought about bringing in for this round? Well, he was the guy I wanted to bring in this round. Then I realized, hey, I kind of have an issue in my second row. Maybe I should fix that. Then I went, hey, I've got an issue with my centers potentially losing 300K this week. I need to fix that, being the three Canberra Raider cheapies. And so I've decided to fix my centers before getting Nathan Cleary. Um, I believe he has a break even of about 99 or something ridiculously high like that. So I'm not too worried about not getting him this week. And even if he does match that break even, he's not going to go up by too much either. So I'm happy to wait another two weeks to get Nathan Cleary in. Yeah, fair enough. He, he would have a high break even because he had a 50 on on the weekend. Uh, yeah, 94 break even currently. Just um, I, I had him because I held him all the way through. Uh, probably the easiest vice captain pick this week because he's got the first game of the round. I could easily see him going massive in this one against the Rabbitohs team that has looked pretty lackluster. So if you've got him, I definitely would be vice captaining and I, yeah, I wouldn't be definitely trading in this week because obviously coming back from the injury, there's the re-injury risk. The Magic Sponge said there's the re-injury risk around the two week mark. So you could maybe look at him for next week, but um, it's not the worst trade in ever this week, but I think there's, yeah, other places you can look instead of uh, Cleary this week. Yeah, definitely. Definitely agree with that. I just don't think it's quite time, but he could also go massive this week. So yeah, I don't think not getting him in is not a bad idea. Getting him in is not a bad idea either. It's yeah. a situation. But do you think there's a chance of a dead cat bounce from uh, the, the bunnies? Um, or do you think so, it's just too terrible to begin with? Yeah, I'll just speak like statistically to that. Uh there is statistics surrounding. I know in different sports, there's there is a bit of dead cat bounce when team when yeah when four teams get their coach sacked. But it's in the NRL that the record doesn't suggest that um, a lot of teams after their coach is sacked lose. So I think potentially they could come better if they get a new coach like a, someone like a Mal Meninga that's a bit of a boyer of boys. But uh, here we go. What if they bring in the Walker brothers? I mean, I would be, it would be fun to see the Walker brothers in the NRL, but I don't think they're a, like an interim coach. They're not a senior yeah, no. of the ship. They have like wacky ideas. Uh, they're, well, they're probably completely off topic, but those wacky ideas have already been integrated into the league anyway. You know, just going for short dropouts, short kickoffs whenever you can. Yeah. That, that's been integrated anyway. There's no need. They don't offer anything the league doesn't have anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, I don't, yeah, I, I, the only thing I know about them is the short, um, short dropouts, short kickoffs. But uh, yeah, like that. I don't know. I don't. I, yeah, the Walker brothers would not be where I would look. I would look to someone like a Malmeninga, someone that's just going to be able to manage personalities. What about an Aiden Tolman? <laughs> an Aiden Tolman. I have no idea. I how he'd, be a good he'd be a good coach. Yeah. All right, Aiden Tolman for next funniest coach. Um. Let's talk betting in this one. Uh, you you brought up potential dead cat bounce, but you're... On yeah, that's not happening. Game. I've got Panthers 30 plus, um, and I've got Tungo through the anytime try scorer and them to combine for three tries at 10.25. I think it's going to be absolute murder out there. I, yeah, think, yeah. I think they have saved JD the embarrassment by sacking him before this game. Yeah, I could... Um... Yeah, I could definitely see that happening. It's sort of got the perfect storm condition, so I, I don't mind a, 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 a like I don't love taking just the normal line, but I don't mind taking that sort of bet that you've taken where it's Panthers to win by heat because I feel like if they start to score points, they could put a cricket score on them, or yeah. the um or the bunnies could just show up and then it could be like a tight one. I don't like necessarily taking the line in this one, but I prefer that that style of bet. Uh, for myself, I just have nothing in this because, yeah, there's too many unpredictables. I don't know exactly what um, what the bunnies are going to put out. So don't think I can put a bet on in this one. Um, the next game, the Seagulls versus the Raiders at Brookie. Uh, the 
big talking point in this one is Ola Kawada and DCE. As we're filming this, DCE's um, judiciary decision is no way. Right now, so we don't know. Successfully downgraded, he's free to play. He could play. He's free to play this week. Okay, so that's big in terms of uh, betting wise. Definitely uh, has some implications on Super Coach, but betting wise is massive. He's a big piece for them. You could make arguments that he's their most important player, even though obviously Tommy T is there, but you could make the argument uh, for DC. Um, we'll talk through some of the options. I think the biggest uh, sort of talking point is is Ruben Garrett from line. He's sort of bottomed out. Uh, that's why I was looking to trade him in at the 600K. I thought he would be well below 600K, but he went and scored 140-odd on the weekend. Uh, yeah, he looks like an absolute slam dunk pick for mine this week. He, yeah, he's not going to play Origin, uh, which is something you have to start thinking about now. Uh, so yeah, I'm all over him. I can't really think of a better trading option this week, and that's why he is. I think he's the number one or number two most traded in option this week. Would you yeah. agree with that? There, I definitely agree with that. I think he, the fact he kicks goals as well at 600k, um, mainly put a very a rather easy draw. Is that true? Like the next couple of games? Um, yeah, I think the next couple, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not too worried I, yeah. about draw regardless because he's going to kick some goals regardless. And yeah, but they've got Raiders, Dolphins, Raiders, Dolphins next too, but then they have uh, Broncos, Storm, but Broncos, Storm both at home. Oh, no, sorry. The Broncos is magic round, but yeah. Yeah, the draw's okay. Uh, but Garrick, I think just at 600k is, is hard to look past. Yeah, fair enough. I, I definitely agree with you. I brought him in for that exact reason. Um, another thing I just wanted to bring up as well is the fact that Olakawatu was suspended immediately after I brought him in. That's the third player who's done that. Yeah, that's that's very like, tough. I'm completely cursed. I broke Dom Young, I broke Dom Flegler, and now I broke Olakawatu. What am yeah, I doing? Actually, you, were gonna, you were not going to bring in Garrick until I, until I mentioned him, so maybe you should need to Reverse that. Yeah, stay oh, don't curse Garrick. Yeah, reverse him now. Yeah, yeah. Please don't curse uh, Garrick for us. Um, but yes. yeah. No, so, uh, is there anyone else who you were kind of interested? Uh, Sorry. Yeah, no. So in this game, in terms of trade ins, not too interested in any other players. Uh, there's a few trade outs to talk about, though. There's all those Raiders guys. Um, for yourself, if you have, or you, you can talk to your situation. You have Savage, Schiller, and Strange. So just quickly talk through what your plan is moving forward. Yeah. Well, so my plan was to always exit by round 10, as that's when the Raiders have the buy. Um, unfortunately, though, I've kind of been forced to start a bit early, given the Raiders have not performed very well in the past couple of games. It appears that both all the Savage, Schiller, and Strange have all peaked. Um, if you don't sell them now, you're probably always about 100 to 150k on each player, which in itself seems a bit nightmarish for any person who's trying to, you know, make money in Supercoach. Um, so my plan is to keep Strange long term. I think if there is any attacking stats that the Raiders get, um, it will probably be through him. So I think he's at least somewhat like of a, at least somewhat of a safe pick there. And then I've also got, um, I think it's probably time to ditch Savage, just given that Schiller. Again, not really a problem himself, but he's he's got the he's been dropped this week. So I'm going to sell the one player who's going to lose money this week, and that's Savage. Do you think that's uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, well, Strange is obviously going to lose money as well, but I don't mind him if you're planning to keep him as a long term option. Just in terms of why I I like Strange as a player, and I I love him as a as an option to play, but I'm trading him out just because of my trade plan. So basically, I plan to trade. Strange and Schiller in the next two weeks because I'm trading Garrick, Young, and Armstrong. Uh, so I Gold basically am forced to trade Strange this week because Schiller isn't picked, so he's not going to lose any money. So I can always trade him next week, even the week after, because Raiders have a buy next week. So, um, yeah, that, that's that's why I'm trading Strange. But if you're looking for an option to hold long term, it would be Strange out of those three for me. But it's just a Yep, it's just a dollars and cents thing for me as, as, as to why I'm trading Strange out. Fair enough. I can understand completely. 
Um, it's a shame as well to people who had Simi Sasangi only to find that he's been dropped this week. Imagine that. Yeah. Picking a brain. Yeah, yeah. We both sort of spoke to why we didn't like Sasangi last week. Uh, and he sort of proved why, exactly yeah, why right. we didn't like him. So, um, And this is why you don't pick a guy after he plays one game and may not play more than two as well. It's, yeah, it's yeah, very exactly. it, can, it can cause disastrous circumstances like this. It's not fun. Yeah, yeah. That shows you the risk and why you, wouldn't, why you shouldn't necessarily pick up someone like a Jai Gray either. There's a lot of risk in those. Exactly. Yeah, there's no guarantee he's going to play again. Yeah. Um, you also held Brooksy. Yeah, so that was in the notes because I assumed that DCE was going to play. I wasn't going to play, and I was hoping that maybe Luke Brooks going to redeem himself a bit. Um, now that DCE is still playing, I think he's just going to be a middling 50 to 55 every game. Um, unfortunately, I, 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 he's just sitting there on my bench. I can't blame him because I know exactly what he's going to get. But also, I don't want to sell him because I don't really have anyone to sell him to at the moment. So I'm kind of stuck in a bit of limbo there. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I'd be trying to get off him as quickly as possible, but yeah, if you're just not playing him, then that's that's fine. I mean, um, he's not losing too much money, which is the, the annoying part. So I don't yeah. have like a reason to dump him as fast as possible. Yep. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk bets in this game. Uh, what do you have, person? Yep. So I've got my bet of the round, which again. It's going to get up this week. It didn't get up last week. It'll get up this week. Manly 13 plus, Servo, Turbo, and Saab at $4. Yeah, for myself, I have the Raiders line. So it'll either be 9.5 or 10.5. Now that DC is named, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to wait on that one before I play it. But uh, I hope, like, I should be able to get at least 10.5 with DC being confirmed named now. Uh, I just feel like the Raiders are going to have to have some bounce back after last week. I think they'll go back to their defense a lot. Uh, and then, yeah, lower scoring games generally, it's better to take the plus line. And, yeah, mainly off a win and, and Raiders off a loss is pretty simple formula uh, in, to, in terms Fair of who to take. Uh, moving on to... The next game, the Broncos versus the Roosters. A uh, few of the Broncos boys back. Do you think Mam will play in this game? Yeah, so both Mam and Cobbo have been essentially told it's a 60-40 if they will play. So I, I wouldn't be playing them until I know that they're going to start. So I would be waiting until, if you have them in your team, I'll be waiting, watching this team list until that hour before the game just to lock them in. Otherwise, you, you never know what's going to happen. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I would, I would agree. Uh, man, if dropped, it'll probably be Tristan Saylor come in there, which will be exciting to see because uh, Madden is out as well with the pack. Uh, so that will be interesting to see. In terms of super coach relevancy, uh, there's not too much in terms of those guys, uh, a player though that's just come back is Payne Haas. Is he someone that you would be looking at? Yeah, uh, I, I want Payne Haas in my team, but at this stage, I can't really justify getting him in. Um, there are just my front row forwards, probably the best part of my team at the moment, just because of how stable they are. They're consistently getting uh, 50, like 50 to 60 in one of the softest positions in the league. Um, or, you know, points-wise. So, again, I can't really justify bringing him in the moment. I've got so many other problems. Yeah, yeah. And probably the, the big point to mention there is that he will play Origin. So, if you are yeah, bringing exactly. him well, yeah. just be yes. very aware that you're going to miss him for three rounds there. So, um, yeah, be aware of that. He's probably someone at this point in time that I'll be looking at after Origin. Unfortunately, I would love to own him uh, sooner than then. But, yeah, just, just this late... And, like like getting into round nine ten, it's probably difficult sort of player to to own. If you're going to jump on, it would have to be very soon or, or basically after Origin. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Uh, you were, you were yeah. So with the sorry, sorry, I was saying you're talking to Carrigan. Uh, yeah. So the Broncos players in general, I'm kind of worried about their big guns playing eighty minutes now. Um, so you've got Reese, uh, you've got Reese Walsh who went down in I think the 65th minute with serious cramping. 
Um, Adam Reynolds as well, same issue. They're not playing 80 minutes. Um, do, you, do you think those cramps could cause an impact into the future or do you think it's kind of just play on from a super coach perspective? Yeah, no, I, I don't see any issue at all in the cramping there. That's the standard thing that happens. High, serious cramps have a high pain level, but not much effect moving forward on their ability to play. So, yeah, I would not be worried about uh, any of the players cramping in this team. They they had a comfortable win and they were resting players. Uh, I mean, obviously, they weren't resting because of the cramps, but, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be worrying too much about the cramping. Uh, that They'll all be up for this game, so I'm not really worried about any of those players in this one. Uh Let's talk some of these Roosters players. Uh, Gussie Cryan with 119 on the weekend. You don't own him, is that correct? No, I don't own that nine-fingered man. Um, I know he's putting up good scores, but it's pretty hard in good conscience to put a, put, put a guy in your team with only nine fingers. You think that's going to hamper his ability to play? I think so. It has in the past, has it not? Have you, have you, seen, have you, seen, have you, uh, have you seen how many knock-ons the bloke has? Pretty regular last year, actually. Look into it. Yeah, last year wasn't a great season for him, but I'm very happy that I do own him. Would even be a buy at this point still, but um, I think there's other options, other better options this round. But yeah, you're absolutely stoked if you own him. Uh, can't complain at all. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. A yeah, you on... just have to love it when... Yeah. A player I want to speak on quickly is Condom. Uh he still has that negative score and he's rolling average, but after next week, he'll have that rollout. So while he has a 100-odd break even this week, uh, but he had an 88 on the weekend. If he gets like a any okay score, he'll have a very low break even next week. Is he a player that you're going to target for next week? Yeah, definitely. He's a guy I really want to bring back in. I brought him in initially for a reason, especially after his 150. Yeah, but I would love to bring him in, but I just need to see consistency from Condom. He just doesn't seem to, in the past couple of games, he seems to have kind of died off a little bit. It seems like Manu's running the ball a bit more, and I'm kind of worried that the ball's not really getting to him early enough to have these big scores. But again, I think it's a wait and see to see how he does this week. If he does well, he's definitely going in my team next. Yeah, I mean, he did have a, sorry, an 88 on the weekend, but yeah, you do have to take into account that they they had about sixty points. So while an eighty eight is good, you you do have to take that into account a little bit. So yeah, he's definitely a keen watch. Uh, you don't have to have him for next week, but if you want him, next week's the week to get him. So yeah, I, I would I'll definitely be yeah, watching so closely. On board with that... Sorry, I was going to say on board with that eighty eight as well. Um, he also didn't score any of the tries in that sixty point thrashing. It kind of makes me a bit worried from a uh, attacking standpoint. They just aren't getting the ball to him. Like if you, if you can't score when, as a winger when they're scoring sixty, when are you going to ever score? Yeah, I mean you can't. Yeah, like he's going to score tries, but um, yeah, like you can't think you can't read too much into that. Uh, he did have one try, I think. You just have a one. Let me double check, but I think he had one try. Uh, sorry, yeah, he had the, like, one of the earlier tries. My fault. Yeah, yeah. So but, um, point stands, but... Yeah, sorry, he had their first try. Uh, yeah, no, I, I still think he'll get tries regardless. Even when he was playing for the Knights, the ball didn't go into him and he scored more than 20 tries in the season. Like, we didn't go right and he still scored tries because he takes, like, intercepts, runs the field and stuff. So even if they're not going to him, he's still going to score tries. So I think he's a, I think he's a good option, especially when he hits around 500k that he will hit. Uh, next week but yeah it's just a watch and see for this week uh, was there anyone else that you wanted to touch on in either of these two teams yeah no one else for you sorry, sorry. Say that you just cut out sorry was there anyone else uh, you... definitely not um, yeah no unfortunately I, I think I think at this point in the uh, game I think a lot of the Broncos plays have been priced out um, other than that not really yeah uh, I mean, Terrell May, for me, I'm, I'm playing him again this week. I think he'll be fine. I think we'll get your minutes back. I think he's just being rested in games where they don't really need to play him. I think they'll need to play him this week. So I reckon he gets around 
50-60 and knocks out a 50-60 in this game. Would you agree? I, I hope you're right. Because so, Kale and May scoring that is just bizarre. Any decent bench plays at the moment, but I'm really worried that he's just going to score another 30. Like, is he, got, is he going to get enough minutes to justify his game, like, existence at this point? Yeah, yeah. You just dropped out for a second, but you're saying basically you think Kale May is going to get another 30 on. Yeah, so let's talk betting in this game. Uh, for myself, I got on early or early-ish on the Broncos minus four and a half on points bet at dollar eighty-two. That at some places at, is out to eight point five. I think definitely the sort of line that you can wait on till game day because Mam uh, and Cobo might be out, so the line might drop back. You might get a little bit better value than that, but I'm, I'm happy to take the. Minus four and a half at this point in time. I think the Broncos back playing in Brisbane um, with all their boys back. So if Mam's playing the, the, a fully fit team, essentially, I would be very scared to play them. And I think there'll be a, there was an overreaction in the market to the Roosters in a big win last week. So, oh, and also the Broncos revenge spot because they lost to the Roosters in round one. So a lot of factors in this one. What about yourself? I think it's time the Bronco, uh, sorry, the Roosters put a decent back-to-back performance in. It seems like they've probably been one of the most bipolar teams this year, absolutely dominating some teams and losing to some teams they shouldn't have, putting on piss poor performances around the park. Um, I think Roosters win uh, with Young anytime try scorer is due at $5. Fair enough. Uh... Totally different to your thinking, but yeah, the hard well, nose. Yeah. Um... The heart's thinking with his head. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, let's talk the Bulldogs Tigers game. Uh, yeah, a few players in this one that are interesting. The first one we can talk about is Lockie Galvin. He's had some average scores recently. What do you put that down to? I think he just hasn't had the best opportunities so far coming back from his um coming back from his suspension to be honest i think he is still a good player i think he's a good super coach player more importantly but even the best players have quiet games and i think he's a victim of that do you agree yeah i think he's a victim of their fixtures they've had a tough couple of rounds and i sort of expected him to do poorly i haven't played in the last two rounds and i'm playing in this week because i expect a good score against the Doggies, and it sort of also speaks to my bet. Like, they've had a Tigers have had a few tough games and they've been losing. But I've had what, Broncos, Penrith in the last two, which is basically as tough as you can get. So, I think the Tigers are going to be a team you should look at betting on, and their players are players that you should look at playing as well this week. Uh, so, that's my opinion on Galvin. Um, Samuela Fine, is he someone that you would look at? He had a poor score on the weekend due to that. Sin bin, but he's in the sin bin is hilarious. The fact yeah. that he just took out a guy running back to the 20 meter line. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, this is probably gonna sound a bit a bit silly, but if he's willing to do a mistake like that, what else has he got in this game? That is such <laughs> a, a dumb fundamental error. I think we're gonna see multiple of those throughout his career, and I just can't trust a player like that. Right. So you're not trading him in based off you think he's going to make more stupid mistakes like that? Indeed. I, I genuinely think he's going to make a couple of silly mistakes on the field. Right. Um, for mine, you can, yeah, I'll look at trading him in the, the next couple of weeks. I think he does play round 13. I'm a little short on round 13 numbers at the moment. He's definitely not playing Origin at least. So he's a, he's a number for the Origin period. And yeah, he'll still be cheapish for the next couple of weeks because he had a 30 odd on the weekend. So uh, definitely watch closely and look at trading in in the in the next coming weeks. I reckon Sam Weller yeah. Finu. Uh, you can't describe that. You have in the notes here the Fox Josh Adokar. What are your thoughts on him? His break even moment? is like I think negative one hundred something insane. No, it's like negative thirty five or negative thirty three or something like that. Okay, negative thirty three. Sorry, over exaggerated a little bit. But <laughs> okay, so maybe one third of what I said. But from here, do you think he's a genuine option at wing? He's he's scoring tries. He's doing decently. But I think a lot of his – is he just had – is he, again, a benefactor of circumstance or is he a genuine option so far? Uh, yeah, he he's the sort of player in news gone past when he was especially in that storm 
he'd go on sort of try scoring runs. So you could try and get him in the run when he's at a low price and then go from there. I think it is a bit of a different situation at the dogs and not as good at not yeah, not as good of a team as the Storm was. Obviously, they're one of the best teams. Uh and also there's a risk of him playing Origin as well. So for mine for this week, there's better op- better trading options in the center wing. But if you want to pod it, yeah, maybe, maybe he's an option, but yeah, could play origin. So there's a risk. Well, is he even really that much of a pod anyway, given that he tends to be a bit of a casual favorite? I can imagine a lot of people who don't quite watch NRL a lot would probably pick him because he's a name player. Do you yeah. agree with that or? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he would have that appeal to a lot of people. Uh, but if you bring him in, he could be the sort of player you bring in and then just play on matchup if you have a lot of depth in your center wing. So there's that option, but uh, not not an interest there for me. Uh, is there anyone else that interests you super coach wise? Um, I'm not sure of his value, but Kurt Manny Man is absolutely tearing it up at the doggies. Mm, he, he looks really good in the 13 for them. Yeah, he looks really good. Is he? Is, does he have a dual second second row position? If he's a second oh. row, I'd generally consider bringing him in. Yeah, he's just second row, not not dual, but just second row. He's 450. 450. I think he's genuine value at 450, especially oh. with. He's not going to play Origin. I yeah. genuinely think he might be a great pick if he get if he plays decent footy like he's doing right now. He's an attacking conduit as well, which is really interesting to see him do that. But I I think he might actually. I think I'm making an argument to bring him into my own team. Yeah, for mine, like not the worst option. But you have to sort of separate what they bring to a team versus a super coach scoring player, right? Most of the time, thirteens are very very good players for their team, like they provide like they're they're that link player, but they don't actually end up getting many super coach points. So I'm not super interested, but you could, you could definitely make worse trade ins than Kurt Man. Um yeah. just quickly to touch on some other players in this team. Joshy Curran uh got the start, which is nice if you own him. Um uh, Kamanu, some people have talked about by like, good player origin. Yeah, is not worth the risk for mine. And there's players like your yeah, Adam Phil Blake or Paint Hearts you can bring in instead. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just don't think he's quite worth it. There's there's top tier players. I think it's a couple who are slightly better than him. So why don't you just go for those top ones? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But 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 a lot of the these doggies middles will be will benefit this week. Blake Taff and Bailey Hayward on the bench. Uh, so Sam Hughes may get a decent score, and Josh Curran will definitely get a decent score this week. So. Are you happy if you're owner of any of them? Uh, I would say hold them for now. You'd be you'd be cheering to be honest. They've done so well for you so far. Keep them in the team. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk betting in this one. For myself, it'll be the Tigers plus seven and a half on Neds uh, or Lad Ladbrokes uh, at a dollar ninety eight. You probably get even, even get that slightly better in, in some places, but. Uh, yeah, $1.98, you're definitely not complaining about. Uh, what do you have in this one? I think Dogs of War are coming. They are playing some very fun attacking footy this year. So I have Adokar, uh, Sherry, and Kiraz to score any time at 16.25. Are you interested in a side bet in this one? More than happy to. What are you talking about? Just do it ahead of the line. That line, would you take the... Yeah, I'm happy to take that line, actually. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, check. On yeah. that line. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that it blurted out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, so Tigers, I'll just quickly speak to it. Uh, the Tigers I like because of two two losses, so they'll be fired up in this one. The team still looks strong. They don't have any big outs in, in this Tigers team. Uh, and the Doggies... Have had some big wins recently, so I think public opinion will be a bit high on them. And then the the seven and a half is more than a converted try, so very happy to take the Tigers in this one. Uh, but yeah, that'll be a, a good side bet to watch for both of us. Definitely, I think this game will end up between somewhere between eight and fourteen. I think it's going to be a close-ish game, but not a close game. If that makes sense. Yeah, gotcha. Um. The next game is the Titans versus Storm. A uh, few big outs for each team there. Uh, for the Storm, Coates out. And for the Titans, Mo Fodawaka. 
And there was talks of Nass being out as well, but he is named in this one. Uh, how do you see this one playing out? Is there anyone super coach relevant for yourself in this game? Um, not that I can think of. Um, to be honest, I think both teams are relatively settled. Uh, Dave Feeder, though, I regret not bringing him in like two weeks ago when I said he was. I said I was like considering him. He's been absolutely killing it since. Yeah, I mean, he's doing what Dave Fitter does. I yeah, generally would expect him to, to do about this well. It's just the same sort of fears as 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 previously like as previously mentioned. He's playing Origin. He's in not an amazing team, uh, so still not a player that I would be looking at. But another one of those players that after Origin, I definitely yeah. will be looking at a bit a bit more. Yeah, there's also AJ Brimson as well, who I think is definitely a fullback and not a six. Like the, they've been trying to fit Campbell uh, Campbell in for. Do you think he's an option as long as he stays at fullback, or would you be okay with him even if he was playing six? Yeah, just a, just an option if he's at fullback for mine. You can get him. You can buy him in the center wing, so that makes him a really attractive option. If I wasn't going Garrick this week, Brimo might be the one that I look at. Problem with Brimo is that you don't have that guarantee that he's going to play fullback when JC comes back. So there's that fear. But yeah, he's definitely an attractive option. He looks very, very good at fullback for them. He's he's by far their best fullback. They just need to give up on Jaden Campbell. Can they play him on yeah. the wing, maybe? He's just not not good enough at the moment to play fullback. I don't yeah, I don't yeah, I don't see him defending anywhere in the front line, to be honest. So I don't know what they're going to do with JC. It's yeah. a tough, tough conundrum for Desi there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for mine, players like Brimo for feeder, while they're close, uh, like I've got, there's other options that I would go to in the center wing and the back row, and the, they're the trades that I've made this week in Garrick and Nicara. Uh in terms of the Storm team, pretty much all their guns fired on the weekend. Papanaus and Munster, Grant Hughes. Uh, Munster had a was the biggest of those ones. Would he be someone that you look at bringing in? Yeah, I'd consider him. But again, for now, my six is a lockdown. If you do have a, if you want to upgrade, he's definitely, I think, at this stage, the premier seven. Is, is he a six or seven super coach? Monster is a six. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I just want to double check that. Yeah, I thought it was a six. Yeah, I I don't see any reason not to upgrade to him if you can, but he this is his first true good game since he's been back. So it could have just been a very, very good game. We don't know his true form so far this season. Um, I'm I'm a bit hesitant to bring him in. What do you think? Uh I don't mind him as a like if you have a TMM or someone like that, I don't mind him as an option that you move to. Personally, better moves for myself, but yeah, it could be it could be a really good pod play uh, if you're able to get him now. Not many people will have him because he does have the Origin run. So yeah, it could be a really good option at the five eight if you want to go a premium five eight. I think he's the guy at, at the moment. Uh, so would be an interesting pod, but not for myself. Uh, I, I just to talk quickly to the other guns. I own Grant and Happy, and. Pretty happy with them. Pappy, a little bit of a worry. Did have a double and yeah, uh, he yeah. scored ninety two. But the problem is he scored a double when he did that. So I'm really worried about games where he doesn't score. What is his true baseline going to be? Is it going to be somewhere in the fifties? Yeah, yeah. So it's... he might not be one of the better fullback options, but he's fine for the moment. Just yeah, problem. Don't worry about it. But I wouldn't be bringing him in for mine. I would be bringing in someone like a like a drink water over him, which we'll talk to uh, in the next game. Uh, let's talk bets in this one. What do you have in this game? Well, I think the Titans are on the up, and I think the Storm are going to be in for a bit of a shock. I'm seeing Storm win 1-12. to It's going to be somewhat close, and Tanner Boyd scores 6-plus points as the goal guard at $5. Yeah, I have a similar sort of bet. I have the Titans plus 14 and a half at $1.92. Uh, took this bet because I I took it before the, the team list. I thought Nass and Coates would be out. Nass is not that much of a needle mover for mine, but 
it, weirdly enough, Coates is a bit of a, a needle mover. He does a lot of work for them and he's a genuine target for them uh, on the wing. So I think he actually does make quite a big difference to how they perform. So I'm very interested to see what they do in targeting that wing without him there. Uh, so, yeah, I think he actually does make a difference, which is weird to say for a winger. I think there's very few wingers in the comp that make a genuine difference to how the team's going to perform. Um, to touch on the Titans, Mo Fodaway crowd is not ideal, but I still like them at a 14 and a half. They've been showing a lot recently. I like the makeup of their one, six and seven. And yeah, I think 14 and a half is too many. Anything over two uh, converted tries is too many points for the Titans in this one. Uh, the next game, the Cowboys versus the Dolphins, a few big super coach options in this one. And I'll let you speak to the biggest one, which is the Dolphins fullback. Uh, Trey ready. Fuller, absolute unit, is averaging something in the 80s, a negative break even of about a negative 100. Um, you'd be silly not to get it even if you, can, if you can this week. If you have a spare fullback spot like I did, you'd be insane not to get this guy. Um, so he's guaranteed this fullback spot pending something like an injury or suspension. And um, other than that, I cannot wait. He's He's got that spot until round 11, so he's got three more weeks to continue rising in price. I think it'd be a bit silly not to get him. Yeah, and just out on top, he'll play 13, 16, and 19 because, Hammer. I mean, most likely, I think Hammer probably gets a center spot in origin. So... Uh, you can even hold him through 19. I maybe wouldn't because that's a long time to miss out on other fullbacks, but I'd definitely hold him through 13 and then reassess from there. And yeah, uh, look, he's, he's playing so well as well. That even during round 12, he might be shifted to center as well. Um, just to play, I'd, I'd play him over Jake Avarillo or Fantasy New. Uh, but again, time will tell. But even then, if he just plays those three weeks, I, I think he's a lock. Yeah, personally, I think it's incredibly unlikely that he does get shifted to center just because he is 170 centimeters tall. He's not a big. No, like, I didn't realize, that, didn't realize he's that small. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, he's not gonna. He's gonna have trouble trying to defend in the front line. So that I think bothers. it's unlikely. But how fat is he? Yeah, how big is he? He's uh, know, 78 kilos. Yeah, take back what I said completely. Yeah, yeah, no, but he's he's been good at fullback for them, and definitely a, a slam dunk sort of pick this week. The only thing is, a lot of people will, will be running those two premium fullbacks, so they'll have a lot of money sitting in the bank like you do, but it's definitely uh, an interesting play, and I, I kind of rate it from yourself. Uh, like, it's, it's a little bit potty, but you've got to be very careful in what you actually do, and you've got to have a bit of a plan of when you are going to move off, because you don't want to miss out okay. on these gun you fullbacks. There, yeah. Long -term. yeah, you don't want to, like, uh, you know, but use a head. Same as yeah. heart. Yeah. Um, the, speaking of gun fullbacks, these opposition fullbacks, Scotty Drink, mm. uh, I can Frank see him going absolutely massive in this one, and he's probably the fullback you want to own in this run of fixtures. Probably the number one fullback you want to own is Scotty Drink for mine, because his fixtures start to open up from now. Uh, and then, I, yeah, I, I think it's unlikely that he plays Origin. People will talk about maybe playing 14, but I think they'll go dual hooker. That's not going to happen. I, I think he's not going to play Origin pending Tedesco deciding he doesn't want to play anymore. And I would rather probably... I think Turbo gets another fullback over him as well. So. I think Edwards would also get another Edwards fullback well. over him. So Yeah, quite achiever that man. Yeah. Uh, so Scotty Drink would probably be... If I didn't have... Yeah, if I had a fullback issue, he'd probably be the guy I look to uh, or Fuller, wh wh whichever way you want to go. But Scotty Drink would be the guy... That I look to is he someone that you might have thought about instead of Fuller, or are you just happy with Fuller in this one? I am happy with Fuller. He's going to make me a lot of money. I think I will reevaluate re when Fuller gets to about five hundred k. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you can't. There's not much downside in Fuller, at least. Whereas Scotty Drink, you know, it's possible he, he goes yeah. poorly and, and loses money. Yeah, exactly. I I'm still trying to build my team at the moment, so I'm happy. I just want to have cheaper players, and I'm going to grow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a whole heap of Cowboys players I'd be thinking about bringing in this week if you didn't already own them because of fixed. Just someone like a Val Holmes, uh, someone like uh, Flight Leah, even even though it's his first game. 
Uh, I'm not sure how long Guy Leah will be in for. So Tommy Chester is apparently going to be back in four weeks. Um, there is a very real chance he'll be back in three. If that's the case, Guy Leah may not receive a single upgrade. So I'm not sure if bringing him is a great idea, to be honest. Yeah, to be honest, I, I wouldn't. I, he's about 360k. I, I'm not looking at bringing him in at the at this point, but there's worse moves you can make, and he's definitely a a, a close watch uh, in this game. Um, in terms of the rest of the Cowboys guys, there's a lot of them that are going to be playing Origin, so just be aware of that. Like your Reese Robson, Nat I, Cotter, Val Holmes will all probably play Origin, so just be aware of that moving forward. Uh, in terms of the Dolphins players, Max Plath is one of the highest traded in this week. Could he be someone that you look at? I think it's too late to trade him in, to be honest. What's he, what is his uh, break even at the moment? Uh, it would still be really low. He's I know Scott tries, players. but is he worth the price to bring in at whatever he is? Oh. He's break even. He's native 28. He's 450k. For mine, he is going to get to six ish. So it's whether you decide if he's worth it. I think he's going to. Get basically 60 or 55, 60 every week forever from now, basically. So it's a decision whether you think he's worth it's worth a trade on that to make 150k, uh, because he's not the sort of player that you're going to necessarily have at the end. Uh, but yeah, definitely worse trading options that you can make. I'm just trying to bring in players that I'm basically going to hold at the end, or your bottom dollar cheap is someone like a Fuller or an Armstrong or someone yeah. like that. So I strongly agree with you as well. Yeah, he's with, not at the price me, point that, that I want. I think the ship sailed, to be honest. I, I think it's a bit too late to get on him. Yeah, I like yeah, is I don't necessarily think it's too late, but I think that um uh that there's better like that that's not the strategy I want to be playing at this time. I want to go super cheap or a player that I'm holding basically to the end. So that's yeah. what that's what my goal is. Strong um, agreement, but yeah. Uh, in terms of the rest of the team, yeah, not not too much else relevant. Let's talk betting. What did you have in this game? Yep. So I think the Finns get up. I know they're outsiders for this one, but they looked good last week. Uh, they're on the st- on the strength, but they've just got that fighting spirit about them. I know they lost to Newcastle, but they dominated in Townsville. Or they dominated in Cairns. Well, sorry, not Cairns. What was it? Uh, Darwin. Um, they dominate. I think they'll get back to their their decent form. They've got this kind of will about them. They know that their players aren't stars per, per se, but they just have that will and force about them. So I think they get up against the Cowboys, and then I've got Fuller and Holmes to score any time at fifteen and fifty. Yeah, uh, look, I, I yeah don't really agree with your thinking in this one. I have, I would if I was going to pick a line, I would take the Cowboys line. But I do have a bet that I think is better in this one. I think the Cowboys will come out and get back to their attacking best. And I think because of like a few of the players in there, like Fuller's uh, offering a lot in attack, but maybe not as much in defense. So I think the Cowboys go over 27 and a half total points in this one. You can get that on Neds or Lads at $1.83. Uh, that was my best bet of the round. Uh, I really back the Cowboys to go big. You've, we've already started to see some bigger scores come in and uh, the Cowboys are primarily an attacking team. So 27 and a half, I think, is pretty free for the Cowboys in this one, especially off a few losses. Uh, let's jump into the Knights versus the Warriors. Uh, game of the round. Indeed, game of the round, surely. Yeah. The Knights are back in Newcastle. We played the Warriors in New Zealand already this year. Uh, and are there any obvious plays for yourself in this one that we should touch on? I mean, how good does David Armstrong look at fullback? Somehow yeah. he has lived up to Ponga being out. He scored the first try of the game last week and ended it. Somehow, awesome game, but probably best fullback on the field, do you think? Uh, well, I mean, they're both fun. great, which is why I'm asking yeah. you. Probably, honestly, Fuller, maybe. Like, Fuller was insane in that game. Fuller might have been man of the match. That's the thing. These guys are both fill-in full in fullbacks, and they absolutely killed it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I can't wait to see what he does this week. He is going to be a guaranteed bring-in for me next week. 
I don't see any reason why you should bring him in now because again, he's played one game. There's no there's no guarantee he'll play three. Until he's on that team sheet for round three, I don't touch a player. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, yeah, he, he looks really good. Um, yeah, but but a trade in for next week, not the worst trade in ever this week. You need to if you need to do that to find cash, but yeah, definitely a trade in next week for someone like a Schiller. Um, but yeah, he looks insane, and I'm stoked that we've got a good replacement at the Knights. Uh, in terms of the rest of the team, like not not too much relevant for the Knights. Someone like Kite this Paul had a bit of bit of bit more of a quiet game, but he's definitely still yeah. a hold for mine. Considering I, he's around still 13. Started. I'd still start him. Players had bad games. Pierce Paul had a bad game. He still scored, what, 49 or something. So uh, he dropped the ball three or four times, made some silly errors, but he'll he'll bounce back as every good player does. So I'd, I'd keep him in there. Uh, let's talk about the Warriors. Tamari Martin, would you be selling him now? I think he's a hold for me. I think he just had a bad game. He got dominated. Uh, I think he will continue to rise, especially against a team like Newcastle, which is known to be defensively terrible through the middle. Um, how about yourself? I think he's best to keep. Yeah, I don't... Well, I am holding, uh, just because I don't see an amazing trade in the 5-8 at this point in time, but I don't mind people selling. If they wanted to go a monster, I don't mind that move at all. I can't knock you for, for moving off him. He hasn't been sort of exactly what we expected. He hasn't been as good as we expected he would be. But he definitely could start going big uh, moving forward. I'm probably not going to play him this week. I'm probably going to play Galvin over him just because I expect the Tigers to do decently this week. But, yeah, he could he could have an all right game this week. But, yeah, I don't know. It, it's not, He's not a player that uh, I have super high hopes for this week. Um, yeah, so how about Sean Johnson then? Is he a player that you intend to keep as well? Is he yeah, for, yeah, I'll go. Um, yeah, I might, I might go a little bit crazy next week with my trades. I have one boost left. I've already spoken to that. I want Armstrong and Dom Young. What I may do next week is move SJ to Sam Walker. So I'll speak to, <laughs> I'll speak to. So from, in my opinion, the two best halves in the comp right now are super coach wise that you're going to be looking to move. We're going to have moving forward and Nico Hines and Nathan Cleary. Um, I already own Nathan Cleary. Nico Hines is the one I don't own. After this week, Nico Hines runs into really tough fixtures. I think it's something like the the Roosters Broncos Storm or something like that in these next three. So don't love grabbing Nico Hines right, like really soon uh, when they're about to run into tougher fixtures. But uh, Sam Walker has a very like a two or a three in his rolling average, uh, and then next week that'll roll out of his average, so it'll be he'll be at a really low price. So I like Sam Walker a lot as a bit of a plug, uh, and I'm, he's someone I'm going to be looking at closely this week uh, to move Sean Johnson off. Obviously, moving Sean Johnson off because he's supposed to have that niggling injury, uh, and that may limit his game time. So yeah, watching there's some rumors Sean Johnson that may limit his kicking abilities as well, which yeah. wouldn't be fun to have as a player. Yeah, yeah. So watching Johnson and Walker very closely this week to see what they get up to. Uh, in terms of trade-ins, though, in the Warriors team, Adam Phil Blake continues to kill it every week, keeps scoring tries for them, which is frustrating as non-owners. Uh, is he someone that you're going to be looking to grab soon? Uh, look, I, I just don't see any need to update, upgrade my front rowers at the moment. They're, they're doing okay, so. Yeah. Cool. For mine, he's not, I'm not trading him in straight away, but it is frustrating. You've got 117 on the weekend. So if you have him, you're stoked. If you need a front row forward trade, he's probably the best option at the moment with uncertainty about what Haas is, with uncertainty on Haas's output. So if you're going to go a front row forward this week, and if you know, Blake would probably be the guy, but he is someone you can wait on because he's playing round 13. So you could, could wait till after round 13 to pick him up. But yeah, uh, as a non-owner, it is scary. Uh, sort of not owning him and knowing he could score tries any week. He probably scores a try against us this weekend. 
Yeah, he probably does. Uh, and middle's weak, so probably probably will yeah. actually. Uh, let's talk bets in this one. What did you have? So I think Armstrong goes over again. He's he's got a strong arm. He's going to score, and I think it's finally time for KPP to to break his duck. Um, traditionally, the left edge second rower is a pretty high try scorer for Newcastle in the past five years with Ponga. Um, still hasn't happened. Even Ponga out, Skip has scored a lot. I think KPP Armstrong anytime try score is at nineteen at seventy five is my bet. Yeah, that's a that's pretty good odds right. for those two. Uh, I've got nothing in this game. Just I just want to be for a couple seconds. So yeah, no, I was just saying I don't have anything in this game. I'm, uh, yeah, uh, not interested in betting on Knights game or well, this Knights game at least. Uh, Warriors off a loss, Knights for win. It's probably not a great spot to play the Knights regardless, but. Yeah, no, not not interested in playing this game. Let's jump into the last game, which is the Sharks versus the Dragons. Uh, the Sharks off a few off the back of a few big wins and a few big scores for some of their players. Kale Era is one that most people will own. Uh, I think we don't really need to say too much. I'm playing in this week. Are you going to play in this week? Yeah, I'm definitely playing in this week. Um. I, he seems to be doing really well, actually. Even if he's not scoring tries, he's he's doing good. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's basing really well, so you can't complain at all about him. Uh, the player we should probably talk about, though, is Nico Hines. He is yeah. killing it. And Absolutely. He's, yeah. he's given me the highest individual score so far for a player. With He scored, scored 160 last week, didn't he? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, if you uh, didn't capture him last week, you're a silly Billy. Yeah, 160. I wish I had him, but I don't, unfortunately. Do you uh, think he'd be a, almost a lock, a, like captain for this week, or do you yeah, think it's I probably, probably would be captaining in this week if I had him. Uh, it's frustrating that I don't. I'm probably gonna captain Val. I think I'm on. I'm not 100 percent certain, but Val probably vice captain Cleary. But yeah, I'd probably be looking at captaining Nico if I had him. He starts to come into some tough fixtures after this one, but yeah, this this game could easily start. see him going big again. He's taking most of the ball playing with Atkinson in the team there, so yeah, definitely, definitely can't complain owning him. Uh, your boy, Hazelton. Hazelton, how good! I actually didn't start him like last week, which I'm so annoyed about. He scored one try, almost scored a second. Uh, he is, as the super coach says, he's the ultimate pod. What do you think of that? Is he not killing it so far this year? I, I hate him. He's I, I hate his bald head. <laughs> Pisses me off. But um yeah, he, he is doing well, but does it piss you off how well he's doing because I brought him in as like a nobody? Yes, that's exactly why. Right. But yeah, oh. like, yeah. Don't train him in, he's not gonna score tries. Yeah, no, don't really. train him in at all. Yeah. The fact that he is still scoring tries is just an amazement to me. Like I don't know how it's happening, but yeah. I love this man. I want to kiss his head so much. Uh, let's talk about Britton Nicara. He's fallen below uh, 600k. So I brought him in this week. He had a break even at 80 odd and he beat that. So uh, yeah, he, he's looking better now and he was always going to come good. He just had, uh, I think he had, uh, he missed a few weeks. Uh, he was suspended. So he had a poor score before then. Now, he scores a sudden comeback, and with the attack looking like it is, I'm pretty keen to jump on a Nicker that's under 600k. Yeah, and I'm moving off a lane that has been very uh, underwhelming. I think he's even when he's scoring tries, he's only scoring like a 60 lane. So Nicker is definitely one I, I want to jump on, and I'm probably going to hold for the rest of the year. So pretty happy to get him in this week. Yeah, fair enough. What's his break even for this week? Do you know, uh, it would be it wouldn't be super low, but it would be. Yeah, I, I might consider doing the same trade as well because Sean Lane's currently rotting in my second row position. He's not going to play this week. He's not playing next week. Um, I guess I could make him sit there for a while if I need be, but maybe I'll just do the same trade as you next week. He's breaking his fifty, so you don't That's need it. Um, yeah, Lomax still at centre for the Dragons. Still at... 
all right option, but uh, well, I don't think it really matters. We spoke about it last week, and have you noticed that he's the one contesting kicks for the Dragons, even yeah. if he plays center? Yeah, he will. Yeah. He, he'll still do those early runs. It really doesn't matter where he plays. I don't think. Yeah. If anything, he's probably making more tackles at center than wing, so it might be a bonus for him to play at center. I still prefer him at wing. I think he's going to score more tries at wing, but yeah, he's fine either way. And someone you could look at trading him, but you were going to trade him in, but changed your mind. Was that just because? Yes, yeah, it was kind of you telling me, "Hey, you know, Garrick is not this much. He's only this much. So bring in yeah. Garrick instead." And I went. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'll bring him in. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably try to bring in Lymax in the next couple of weeks. He's not going to... Actually, no, he might play Origin, which may throw Spanner into the works, actually. So uh, I'll see what happens, but I would like to bring him in before the end of the, end of the, the season. So yeah, yeah, definitely wait on Origin teams at this point for mine to decide whether you bring him in. Uh, anything else Super Coach Wise want to touch on? Or let's just jump into bets. Yep. Let's go straight to the bets. What do you have in this one? Yep, so I have my pick of the round. I have chosen four try scorers. I think are a genuine chance of scoring in this game. I have my favorite Ronaldo R5, uh, Tommy Hazelton to score because he is so unbelievably... He's he's hot right now. He's hot, he's sexy, he's dripping wet, and he's got to get over the line. Uh, and then I've also got Nico Hines. He's killing it. And Zach Daddy, anytime try scorer is... At $84.50. Crazy they're giving you $84.50 for that. Should be a dollar fifty. It should be. It should be a dollar dollar at one because it's bound to happen. Yeah. Um for myself, I've got the Dragons plus 12 and a half on this one. You can find that on points bet at a dollar ninety-seven. There is no uh, way that's happening. The dragons are gonna get absolutely exploded. Their bum holes are gonna be like this wide. <laughs> uh so dragons, why I like the dragons in this one. So the sharks, I think, have obviously while well, they've, they've pumped teams in the last couple of weeks, I think they've had the benefit of the situation. So last week, obviously, Fogey was out. It was the first week that he was out. I think it was just a really good position for the sharks, and that's why I took them week before. I think Cowboys were on a bit of a form slump, and, and the sharks uh, were good in that position. I think uh, it's going to start to catch up with them. The, the the Dragons aren't missing too too many decent players. Uh, and, yeah, I just like them a lot in this spot, especially off a loss where they're going to be fired up, especially at a more than two converted try difference. I think they're going to be really fired up in this game. Uh, so, yeah, 12 and a half, 13 and a half is a spot that I would want to play them. Maybe a 13 and a half is even better just because uh, they could kick a field goal to put it out over two converted tries, so 13 and a half might be even better. So I'll have a look and see if I can find decent odds on, on 13 and a half in this one. Fair enough. I'm happy to take a side bet on this one if you are, because I think sure. there will be a shark pumping. We're going to cool. be seeing a, an arm in the uh, shark's mouth. Cool. Got another side bet on this one. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Uh I think that's everything for this round. That was the last game. Uh, we'll keep thinking about what we're going to make the side bet punishment. If you have anything, leave it comments. in the comments. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Do you have anything part-related to add in this one? Uh, Art-related? What are you talking about? Heart. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I just want to say the heart, the head. It's time to go to bed. Yeah, really good chat. Uh, we're both off a couple of losing weeks, so leave in the comments if you think we're going to lose again or we're going to win big. I think you back us into the corner and we win big. So Yeah, definitely. Tell us your favourite joke of the episode. We'd love to hear. <laughs> Tell us the thing you got most offended by. Post us all over the social media saying we're really offensive or something. I don't really know. Actually, please don't do that one. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get cancelled. Please don't cancel me. Uh, uh Got anything else to say about that other than please don't cancel us? Please cancel Aiden. The heart. No. <laughs> All right. That's everything. We'll go fuck ourselves. <laughs>